Hey, welcome to the prayer porch. Uh, this is Lori Spencer and I am at my prayer porch. This is the channel where I come and I just share a word each day just to encourage my heart to write God's word on my heart to help keep me aligned in him in that day. And uh, Lord, I just come before you and I just pray that you would take these moments. And let me not take any moments for granted. Me use these moments to glorify you and all that I do and say. And I thank you for every breath that you gave me today and everything that you have done to remind me it is you who gives me every moment. So may I use those moments in return in giving them back to you and using them wisely. I love you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Today's prayer porch is a little bit different, and um, it's different because, I'll be honest, I, could, I don't notice I didn't say good morning, because it's not morning. As a matter of fact, it's almost late afternoon. It is late afternoon. It's like four o'clock. I've been out of school today, and uh, up at my regular time, moving, doing all those things, and thinking about the prayer porch all day, but I've really mauled over it, because it's kind of been a lazy day for me. It's been one of those days where um, I, 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 my mind's going and I have, I kept thinking, okay, Lord, what do you want for the prayer porch? What is it? I read my, um, stayed up and laid in bed today, reading through my uh, scriptures and different devotionals on my phone. And they were good. They weren't bad. They just, you know, I prayed about it. I didn't feel like it was a prayer porch moment. And so I came down, I have a friend staying with me, and we talked a little bit, and she said, are you going to film the porch before we uh, go? We went out and grabbed some breakfast, and I said, you know what, it's just, nothing's hitting, nothing's hitting. And, um, and I have just, on the flip side of things, it was just like tender moments. I look and back at my day, and I'm saying, God says, you know what, you missed me. And I've come and you missed me because you think I have to be a certain way. And yet I've come because as we're sitting there this morning and I was sharing with my guest and I, um, I, I had shared with God one-on-one -on -one here in the morning when I woke up and then I came downstairs and my friend Jan and I are talking and then I get a guest at the door and um, it's a wonderful young lady who I just, uh, I, I just, I hope that I can just give her an easy bit of Jesus that I can. I want to love her. I want her to know she's lovable. And God brought her to my door today. And I've not seen her in a while. And it was good to see her. And she just dropped in. Just dropped in. Did she? Or did God send her that way? I get to, uh, we go out to eat. And while I'm getting out, to, while I'm sitting there waiting to be out to eat, uh, waiting for a seat because it was, everyone was trying to get in there because I was very, and I was resting, I'll be honest, inside myself with disappointment because we were supposed to get all this snow today and I'm a lover of snow. And it is like, we didn't even get a raindrop. It was like snow and then ice and then it, we didn't even get a raindrop. And I'm like, oh, all my friends are posting snow pictures that they've been here and there. And I'm wonderful, wonderful cousin on my, on my husband's side who sent me a video so that I could just hear the sounds of winter and she, the stretched and stream under some cold ice. And it just, it delighted me. That was like my taste of snow today. And yet, even in texting her, I was able to minister. Then I was able to minister and text some family and then a prayer. It was like, I felt like my day kept being delayed. And yet as I sat here thinking, Lord, I'm ashamed because my day has been so delayed. I just feel like, well, I don't have much to show for it. Yes, I did laundry. Yes, I I uh, got my kitchen cleaned up and picked up a little bit. And I, I got some, but you know what? Those were little jobs, little jobs. And then he said, really? I came to your door and you let me in. I'm a traveler and you gave me a place to stay. I, I knew there was someone who needed to hear you and you prayed with them. I didn't, God, I didn't. I didn't. I just said, I said, my heart and said, I'm praying for you. And because of my, my group of ladies text us that today and I had said a prayer with them. And he said, you've been asking for time with your children. And instead of them being in their room, they came down and they laughed with you. They played with you. You guys, 
forced around, you conversed. I did. I did. And then wait a minute, Lori, wait, wait, wait. You asked me to get your husband to work safe today because he was driving part of the way and you knew there was gonna be snow and you prayed for him safety in the snow and I held that off for you. I did. I did. But God, I still don't feel like I've given you what I needed to give you today. And you're right. Sit, come sit at my table. God, there's so many things I should be doing. I have this day. I have this day that I can be using. Sit at my table, Lori. So I sat at the table and I sat here and I opened the scripture and you know, there was just, I thought, oh, Isaiah. I love Isaiah. I'm growing to love Isaiah so much. And it took me from Isaiah to First Peter and all oh, this is good too, Lord, but, but that wasn't it. It wasn't it. I got a text and I, while I was sitting here reading, I remembered that uh, someone very close to me that I love with all my heart is serving some time. He got to tell him happy birthday. I did. Suddenly my heart shifted and I started praying for him and praying for his family. And praying for those who are lost and those who are hurting right now. And suddenly I, God said, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming into my courts. I got time. I don't have time. I got to get dinner started. No, I've waited so late. I got to go get dinner started. God said, sit and be still and give me your So I'm sitting here and of all things, popping up on my phone in these quilts while I'm getting my phone set up to film this, came these two quilts that I thought were quotes, not quilts, quotes, that I thought was interesting. Victor Hugo says, short as life is, we make it still shorter by the careless waste of time. And I was like, that's it. That's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about wasted time because then I'll be convicted and I'm going to sit here and confess that I think I've wasted all this time today. And God said, stop, stop. Then I found this other quote that I thought was really cool. It was by somebody, I don't know these names at all, Woodrow Crow, and it says, you have eternity to enjoy the honeymoon but only a short time to prepare for the wedding. So I was like, this is it, this is it. So I started Googling, I said, Lord, I need scripture verses. And we have this really good book, we, I love. Brian and I ordered this from Rabbi and it's scripture keys. And it's where you look up a certain thing that you're going through and it gives you scriptures for that. And it was empty with finding how to do, find scriptures for wasting time. So then I looked up scriptures for wasting time and God revealed a whole lot more to me than I even thought or imagined. I knew then what I was supposed to share with you today on the porch. And it kind of bounces around a little bit, but I want you to listen with me and come with me on this journey. Because he started me in Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 3, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter six. It says, but you lazy bones, how long are you gonna sleep? When are you gonna wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. That's when poverty is gonna pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. I said, see, see, this is what I need. I am going to come on the prayer porch and I'm going to tell you I've been lazy. I've been lazy. I said, don't stop there. I have another verse for you. I have another verse for you, Lori. You do? You do, God? What is it? What is it? I scroll down and I find this one. Psalms 
chapter 90, verse 12. Teach us to realize the brevity of life, that we may grow in wisdom. There it is again, Lord. There it is. I know I'm wasting time. I'm wasting. How can I waste this day? How can I sit so slothfully? He said, wait, 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 wait. I'm not done with you, Lord. I scrolled. There's another verse that came up. And in this verse, I came to Psalms 39. And in Psalms 39, I started at verses 4 and 5. And it says again, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. How fleeting is my life. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire life is just a moment to you. At best, each of us it's but a breath to you. We're merely moving shadows and all of our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth and we don't even know who will, who will spend it or how we're going to spend it. So Lord, where do I put my hope? And I stopped there and I literally did the same look I just gave you. I said, Lord, if you're telling me, you, I, I'm feeling like I was wasting time. I'm sitting here. I don't know what to do. Then you reflect back at me and say, wait a minute. Did you really waste time? Because I have been here with you in these moments. My God, I, I don't feel like I was productive for you. I feel like I'm failing you. He said, you're failing me because you're looking at you. Look at me. Look at me. Look at where I am in your day. I came to your door. I was in prison. I was in need of prayer. I was just in need of fellowship. I was in the running water that you took time and let somebody share with you in the cool, the snow that you couldn't even get to and yet I brought it to you. You were in the prayer of the little girl going to the hospital and the one that has an appointment coming up that was canceled because of snow and you have one more week to pray hard for her. You have a wedding to plan. Because that honeymoon's going to last for eternity. So what are you doing to plan for it? What do you mean, where do you put your hope? Lord, you put your hope in a honeymoon. You're going to walk with me and you're going to talk with me. Make that your every breath because your life is but one breath of his. Wow, God. So I did as he always has me do. I read a little before and a little after. And God helped take my focus and fix my eyes on him. So when I looked back at Psalms 39, it started with the beginning. I said to myself, I will watch what I do and I will not sin in what I say. I will hold my tongue when ungodly are around me. But God, then I stood there in silence, not even speaking good things. The more I thought about it, the hotter I got. The more I thought about what I was doing, where am I, what, what do you want from me, God? I'm trying, I'm trying. He said, I want you to stop. The Lord reminded me how brief my time on earth will be. He reminded me that my days are numbered and how fleeting my life is. Lord, you have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. My entire life is just a moment to you. But at best, each of us is but a breath. We are merely moving shadows 
and all of our busy rushing ends in nothing. We heap up wealth, not knowing who will spend it. So Lord, where do I put my hope? This is why you read Asker. My only hope is in you. Rescue me from my rebellion. Do not let fools mock me, even when I am that fool. I am silent before you. I won't say a word, for my punishment is from you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cries for help, for I am your guest, a traveler passing through, just as my ancestors were before me. Leave me alone so I can smile again before I am gone and I exist no more. So I waited patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and he heard my cry. Hmm. Preparing for the wedding because the honeymoon is gonna last forever. Short as life is, we make it still shorter by a careless waste of time. But sometimes we make it shorter because we don't stop and realize the moments that he's put in front of us that are his. You never know. He's going to come knocking at your door. He's going to ask you for your hospitality. He's going to ask you for your company. He's going to ask you to text an encouraging word or to let someone know you're praying for them. Don't be too busy. You miss it. Don't be too busy to miss it. Because it's those details in planning for the wedding that make a difference. Because the honeymoon's coming. And boy, will it be great. Because it will last forever. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you for being in this moment. Thank you for coming on the prayer porch and taking some time for him. Some time to stop and say, wow. When I thought I was being lazy, you took me and was stopping me for a moment. To show me you and how much I need you. Thank you, Lord. May I not miss a single moment in my preparation for the wedding. Width of my hand. Yeah. That's how my life is to him. But it's because he holds me in that hand. He touches me and he loves me. And he loves you. I'm looking. It's a little longer for a prayer porch. We'll see who watches to the end. Boy, it's worth every minute when you have it with him. Let him use your moments and ask him to see him in your every moments. And then use those moments wisely. Don't rush past them. It's a chance to share him with others and to let others share him with you. See you tomorrow in the prayer porch.